Okay, hey everybody. I just wanted to do a short video. I feel like I say that every time, but um, I wanted to make a video today because I wanted to like wash the taste out of yesterday's video, kind of like out of my psyche, because I knew th that I was really wanting to make a video yesterday, but I was having a weird day. I was kind of like off. I was kind of stuck in my head. Um, I think like it was a lot of junk food that I'd been eating, like specifically chocolate. Um, I, I, I don't know, for whatever reasons, it was just like one of those days, one of those moments in time where I was just feeling like super anxious and in my head. And even when I was making the video, it was like, you know, my words weren't coming out and I was feeling myself reverting back to kind of this like, you know, like the, the mom from the original Carrie movie, this is like an obscure reference, but you know, I kind of have like that, that scene from the original Carrie where she's like, they're all going to laugh at you. They're all going to laugh at you. And that kind of like re repeats in my mind. And it, it's kind of like, I, I was so proud that I got that video out, even though like it wasn't, um, you know, I, I felt like it was obvious that I was really, um, really nervous, you know, and really just kind of like in my, in my ego and operating from there. But that's one of the biggest things like I, I've kind of learned from uh, learning how to live these past, like going on five years is that, you know, even though it's not going to be the best, like whatever, whatever it is, just like basic communication in my case, um, it's not going to be the best all the time. It still is this learning experience, you know, it's this opportunity for growth and, and I feel better when I push through it because it's like, you know, I'm either going to live my life on a day by day, decision by decisions, second by second basis to, operate from this place of fear and doubt and whether it manifests as anxiety or being self-conscious or being stuck in my ego or, or like specifically like fixating on one thing, I'm either going to be like ruled at the end of the day by fear or I'm going to just, you know, acknowledge it and say, well, fuck it. You know, what I tell myself is I'm not going to die. I'm not going to be that person. Like evidently a lot of people are where they are on their deathbed saying, damn, I wish I would have, I, I wish I would have tried. I wish I would have put myself out there or, or, or done this, you know? And, and I, and I just refused, refused to do that. And it feels so much better when, when I push through and when I do work through it, even though it's not the best, I can like look back and it, it's kind of like extrapolate this, this learning and this growth and like, more self-confidence, which is huge. And I just want to say, like, I've had some real, I feel like spiritual downloads recently, um, where it's like the more I just try to operate from this place of total self-acceptance and honesty, it's like, it's so funny to, to see, um, this connection and this cannot be a coincidence. And I, in fact, I think it's like, you know, the meaning of life and like a big, you know, key of life is that the more I love myself and the more I operate from just like saying yes to myself and just following my gut and my heart and my soul and just, just living life, like on, on my terms from a place of self-love and, and, and empowerment, the more I do that, the more like I look externally and, and all of these, everything that I used to put you know, my entire faith and stock in, like the more I love myself, I can see myself. And the more I see like everything for like the power illusion that it is and that it's always been, you know, and even like, of, of course, like I'm talking about like all political systems and, and Hollywood, but also just like family and, and, and friends, you know, I don't, um, allow like mom to have this power over me anymore. And that's just, you know, as, as one example, I'm not trying to constantly get her validation or, or approval or, or anyone's. And, you know, it's funny out of, out of everyone that I've talked to about really what, what I'm trying to do. And just like, I, I don't know if it's going to work out. Um, but I'm going to, you know, put myself out there and, and try to get published. And that's what I'm, I'm working on now. And I have been for like the past few months is really trying to, um, 
reach out to a publisher and, and it's so funny. It's like, we are all on the hero's journey and it's like the hero's journey or the, the heroine's journey. And, you know, in my case, it's like the heroine's cautionary tale, like pun intended, I guess, but it, it's, we're all like having to face our biggest dragon at the end of the day. And it's always, it seems like some variation of ourselves. And for me, it's ironic and it's, it's like almost comical that what, um, you know, one of the biggest reasons for my existence and my soul's purpose is to get my voice out and get my writing out because it's such, you know, a competitive industry. And it's just like, I have to like face constant rejection and just be like, okay, fuck it. I don't care. And just, you know, stay from like this place of knowing, like I'm on the right track and the right, um, the right agent is going to, is going to pick it up and it's going to be in like divine timing, just like absolutely everything is anyway. And it's so funny. Like I, I am my own biggest critic and I was so hard on myself. It, it was just, um, not even, it's hard to explain how, how much I hated myself for so, so long and how backwards my thinking was and, and, and just how fucked up my mind was. And now I'm at this place where, uh, you know, self-love and authenticity and belief in myself and in the process and in life and in, and in my voice and this, this self-empowerment is like absolutely key to, to everything. It's so funny, but w when I tell people like what I'm going to do, just, you know, with, with my writing that I'm trying to get published, it's so funny. Like the amount of, um, of hate <laughs> that you'll, that I've gotten and it's unintentional. I, I truly think it's, it's not intentional and it's just, this is one example of people don't like it. It seems like a lot of times when you, um, you know, grow and, and stand in your authenticity, a lot of people don't like it. And, and there's just always these like snarky comments, like from friends and family of like, Oh, well, good luck with that. You know, Oh, you got to have a lot of money before you can get published. You got to, you know, have money to like get your foot in the door and like basically pay to have your, books put on the shelves or, Oh well, God, what, how, what are you going to do for money? That's not, you know, that's not a plan. Like, you know, people from West Virginia don't become authors. Like who do you think you are? And that's kind of been like the, um, the feedback just, just with everything, because it, it's not a coincidence that I think we're taught not, not just females, but maybe like, especially females or, or, or maybe it just feels that way because obviously I am, I am a woman, but for people in general, I guess we're like taught that loving yourself is, is bad. And it's like, if you are a Christian, it's like, Oh, you know, you're not supposed to have pride and you're not supposed to have vanity and you're not supposed to, you know, think that you are God and, and that God is like living through you. And I'm like, my God, that's, that sounds beautiful, but that's like, I don't know, blasphemous in so many people's eyes. But then the other way, like I wasn't a Christian, but I definitely was religious, although I didn't know it. I'm a very spiritual person now, but for a long time, about 10 years, the first, you know, from adolescence on, I was never a Christian. That was never how I got close to God. Um, you know, God just didn't speak to me through, through Christianity. And so I thought I was an atheist, but I really... I, I was like, I can see in hindsight, like every other atheist I've ever known, which is like, I was deeply religious. I just didn't know it because it's, it's like, for me, I wasn't a Christian, but I wasn't an atheist. I was like, you know, worshiping Hollywood and the democratic party. And like, you know, I was always like Bible thumping for the Democratic Party and like trying to like tell people and preach the good word and get on my soapbox and be all holier than thou. And, you know, it's like, my God, how is that not a religion, you know? And, and now I'm just like, wow, I believe in myself and I believe in God because I believe in me, you know, and my soul is God, you know, we, it, that's, 
for all of us. That's what makes like human beings so beautiful, you know, and it's just, it's just really neat to see like, to feel yourself changing, you know, and, and that's what, like, when I do have, I kind of got like lost my train of thought, but what's new, but when I have, like, that's what I have to keep, you know, reminding myself, like when I have bad days, even though it's like, I don't even want to use or anything, it's really easy to fall back into old patterns of like really toxic self, self-talk and self-thinking and, and it's hard to break patterns and like unlearn and relearn like negative, you know, unlearn the negative and, and insert a positive. It's really hard to rewire your mind, but I just keep like taking these tiny, tiny little steps and it's kind of like relapse is part of recovery. Like I was talking about in my other video. It's just like, even if I take a couple steps backwards, you know, even with, with my mental state, um, I just keep moving forward, you know, and that's my steps are as big as they can be, but they're as small as they have to be. And whatever size, as long as I'm moving in the right direction, you know, that's like something to be proud of. So I just kind of want to leave it at that, but you guys have a good night.